I heard you speaking about how you uh, looked up to Henry George or how you had read Henry George, and you also had said that you admired early Austrian economists, but said that you think that the Austrian school has been sort of corrupted and you don't have much use for uh, the current uh, version of the Austrian school that's out there. Again, just to, as a way to kind of get into the objections to income taxes, could we go into specifically what you you may have meant there? What Austrian economists uh, might you look up to and may have influenced you, and why do you object to the current Austrian school as it exists now? The uh, early Austrians, uh, not- notably uh, Knut Wicksell and uh, Eugen von Bamberg, hit the nose on the head. They saw how you can separate land income from the income of uh, man-made capital and uh, adjust the tax system accordingly. Over time, however, that aspect has been pretty much forgotten so that Austrians don't think about tax policy or think about it very little. They think almost entirely in terms of central bank policy and uh, within that uh, limited framework, they do some good analysis, but the framework is limited. They never talk about tax policy anymore. Well, let me ask, since you brought up central banks, what is the Georgia's perspective on central banks? Did uh, did Henry George ever reference them? I mean, I, I know at the time that he was writing, the U.S. didn't necessarily uh, have a central bank per se, but did he ever delve into that subject? George himself never wrote or said or perhaps thought very much about central bank policy. Uh, Latter-day Georgists, uh, many of them have shown a a good deal of interest in central bank policy. So uh, this is simply another split in in the movement. If movement is the right word, let's say in the adherence of the philosophy. What are some Georgist takes on a central bank And actually, just monetary policy overall, is there any sort of general connotations that we can get from a land value tax or from the belief that land is common property that would expand or that we could extrapolate into monetary policy or where money, where the value of money comes from and uh, how government should uh, either regulate or not regulate money? There is a vocal minority of people allied with the Georgist movement who believe in uh, things like the 100% money. They are so radically uh, different from other Georgists that uh, it's almost a separate movement. I myself have a fairly simple solution. That is, the major problems with central banking, in my opinion, uh, come from the use of land value as a collateral for bank loans. In the uh, 2008 crash, for example, was basically a crash of uh, mortgage-backed securities. That is, securities based on land value. And, and the, the history of land values is to uh, cycle up and down very rapidly. Oh, right. Actually, I had spoken with Fred Fulbury previously, and he actually said that it's pretty much an 18-year cycle. And he even predicts that uh, eight, since 18 years after 2008 is 2026, that we actually should anticipate that the market will collapse again in 2026. Do you ascribe to that principle that the business cycle overall that all of the previous recessions and crashes that we faced, that they're primarily based on uh, on these real estate issues? I have a high opinion of Fred Fulbury. He's one of the few people who has been able to put Georgism together with uh, Austrianism. As for the uh, precise number of years of, of, of a cycle, I don't think the history of land value cycles supports anything that uh, exact. Uh, that 18-year uh, cycle, and I'm partly responsible for popularizing it, I think, uh, goes back to a masterwork by a chap named Homer Hoyt, 
published in 1933 called uh, 100 Years of Land Values in Chicago. Right, and Fred Fulver actually did reference that specifically when I spoke with him. Yeah, yeah, Fred has uh, studied that too. There, there has been a cycle of land values, and it's closely related to a cycle of banking expansion and contraction. And the reason they're associated is because during boom periods, banks relax their restrictions on uh, using speculative land values as collateral. So uh, when a land boom gets underway and the banks start lending on the land, then that boosts the price of land and that boosts the uh, eligibility of land as uh, collateral and uh, you have a spiral. Uh, you could call it an upward spiral where land values and uh, bank creation of money go hand in hand. However, it has not been a specific 18-year cycle. During the 19th century, it was roughly that average, so you could have expected another one uh, at the beginning of the 20th century, but it didn't happen. Uh, it waited until 1929. And then you had uh, extensive and basic tinkering with uh, bank regulation during the 20th century, and you also had two world wars and the Korean War and the Vietnam War and all, all of those things uh, messed up the periodicity. Although uh, Paul Ferry and a couple of other people, too, had spectacular results going from the peak of 1990 to the peak of 2008 and projecting it into the next one. Well, again, this, this does seem to go hand in hand with the, with Austrian uh, economics because the Austrian economists, I believe, would say central banks produce all this fake money <laughs> that inflates the value of. They wouldn't say just land; they'd say many different things. But we could just we could specifically focus on land, and uh, then when folks realize that the value of the land is not as high as the artificial currency has created the speculation to go, that that's when the market crashes. So wouldn't Georgism be against central banks and fiat currency and fractional reserve banking insofar as they create this fake money and that inflates the value of land? Wouldn't, wouldn't Georgists and Austrians be on the same side in that debate? Well, some Austrians are, and Paul Vary is the best known one. I'm a little more skeptical of the uh, extreme solution of 100% reserve banking and doing away with fractional reserve banking. Uh, I think that Austrians, left to their own devices, overstate the uh, autonomous role of bank expansion. And aside from uh, Paul Vary, and a few others, they uh, completely ignore the role of tax policy and they completely ignore the, the role which I think Hoyt's research established, the independent role of the land cycle. But uh, anyway, there's a strong connection between the two. And uh, Well, I, actually, I'm kind of interested. You said uh, an independent land cycle. So is there a value of the land that you believe goes up and down in the market based on uh, some other some other cycle or some other reason? Yeah, it's based on a kind of lemming behavior of uh, land speculators. That's uh, that was uh, Hoyt's emphasis. But I learned a lot from Hoyt while I was getting that emphasis from reading his uh, research. Uh, he kept uh, intruding the role of banking, and since then I have appreciated, I think, how closely these are tied together. So uh, the solution, as I see it, is simply to uh, keep banks from accepting the speculative land value as collateral for loans. 